Sally, talk about people helping. Well, farmers are uh, calling for a land army of workers to try and help them pick fruit and vegetables during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, Nina is in the newsroom for us uh, with a bit more information on this. Morning, Nina. Yeah, good morning. There's actually a cleaner coming this way, so keep your eyes peeled for that one as well. As you say, they've been doing a brilliant job. Uh, yeah, yesterday we spoke to the boss of Morrison's about the importance of keeping all of our shelves well stocked. Now, fruit and veg are obviously a fundamental part of our diet, but also our economy. Now, farmers have been telling us that this is a really unsettling time for them, as it is for many industries. But according to one farming trade association, 98 per cent of harvesters last year came from outside of the UK. So uh, a worrying time for farmers like Ben. He farms fruit in Kent. And this is John in Lancashire. He farms lettuce. If we can't get staff from the EU across here because there's some border issues or because the virus is causing a problem, all this crop in this field here will be left to rot and it won't be able to feed the UK nation during this difficult time. Every year, we as an industry rely on motivated individuals coming primarily from Eastern Europe to come across and support us harvesting our crop. This year, it looks very unlikely that that will be the case. Let me give you some numbers to show you the scale of the potential hole in the workforce. So as, as soon as in two weeks time, we will need around 6,000 people to pick asparagus. Uh, another six to 7,000 people will be needed to harvest lettuce. And then from the end of next month, from the end of April, 29,000 more people will need, be needed to pick summer strawberries. And then uh, later than that, 10,000 more will be needed later in the summer to pick apples, pears, cauliflowers, cucumbers, the real fundamental staples that we need on our plates. Yeah, so real problems there. And what, what, what about the solutions? Uh, well, farmers and their staff have gone on the key workers list, uh, but they're going to need help. This is the warning that they've been given to us. If we don't get the workers, our crops will simply rot and that will mean shortages on the shelves, but also prices going up. And um, the industry has set up a scheme which is called Pick for Britain. So far, 14,000 potential workers ranging from students to carpenters, uh, chefs, people who've worked for the armed services in the past. And um, what they do is they go onto a farm, they go into isolation for seven days and they stay in temporary accommodation. So it's a big commitment for those workers. Another worry for farmers is the obvious disruption to the hospitality industry. So there are no hotels running, there are no restaurants, um, and that means that some prices are already slipping. Now, we've been told that one milk processor has already told suppliers that he will be paying two pence less per litre. So that's already happened from the end of this month. Um, the government says it is talking to the National Farmers Union and they want to help to plug this gap because they know how important it is. And if you are interested in joining the paid land army to help pick these crops, you can go online, have a look at websites around Concordia. And also, if you Google British summer fruits, you'll get onto the job site there. I'll also make sure we put those links up on my Twitter and on the BBC Breakfast Twitter in case you would like to help out with the fruit picking. Are you interested, Dan and Louise? I do know. I've, I do quite fancy. I mean, I, I know it's really hard work as well, but yeah. I do. Nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Maybe have a little taster along the way. Just a little one. Just to make sure it's all legal. You've got to, yeah. <laughs> now, the images of empty shelves and queues at the supermarkets made headlines earlier this month for understandable reasons. But this morning we've got details of just how busy our supermarkets have been over that period. Uh, Nina has got those details. She's in the newsroom for us this morning. So how crazy did it get, Nina? Well, good morning, Dan and Louise. Uh, March was the biggest sale of supermarkets, biggest month of grocery sales ever recorded in UK supermarkets. Here's a stat for you. So um, from between March the 16th, so the day the Prime Minister seriously restricted movement, and Thursday the 19th, 88% of households visited a supermarket. And what's more, over that time, each family made an average of five visits. So an average of five visits to the supermarket over a period of four days. Now, part of that was because restaurants, cafes were closing. People decided to stock up on things for dinner and for lunch and, and, and meals for the kids. But interestingly, alcohol sales have been up over March by 22%. Perhaps people recreating trips to the pub via FaceTime or house party apps. And um, slight changes in behaviour as well as the volume of what we're buying. So convenience stores like Spa, Nisa, Independent, 
prominent small corner shops saw an increase over that week in March of 30% compared to the year before. Um, what is encouraging is that Kantar and Nielsen, who analyse all of this data, predicts that because of social distancing and the new rules on movement, that panic buying will now stop. There'll be fewer repeated trips to the supermarket, partly because we're not allowed. We're trying to cut our trips to uh, once every 10 days, but also because we're seeing now, aren't we, that the supermarkets are managing to replenish the shelves as long as we all shop sensibly. Nina. Thank you very much.